In 1947, Denny Denley had a dream to take his 147cc petrol-driven Argson tricycle over the Alps. He'd recently recovered from polio, which he contracted while serving in the Royal Navy during the Second World War, and it had left him paralysed from the waist down. Many people doubted he and his trike could make that 1,500-mile journey from London to Switzerland, but he proved everybody wrong. Denny's adventures led to the formation of the Invalid Tricycle Association, which after many different incarnations is now known as Disabled Motoring UK. Like all good ideas, it happened to me about two in the morning and I, I just thought, we've got this trike sitting in our foyer that's been there for years and we've done absolutely nothing with it. And you know, sadly, Denny had died and I felt that it would be a really fitting tribute to a man such as Denny to recreate his journey on his trike across the Alps. It's an amazing achievement that a man took a trike across the Alps but not only did he do that, he did it on his own. And when we you know, recreated it, it was with a team, it was with backup, it was with a mechanic. When Denny broke down, he only had himself to fix that trike. And I think that's what's so amazing that he did it, you know, completely on his own. The feeling was one of trepidation before we set out. Um, quite a bit of anxiety but mixed with excitement because uh, of what was laying ahead of us and uh, yes so it is a bit of a, a mixed bag of emotions really but uh, I think everybody was up for the challenge. The team tried to follow Denny's route through the Alps as close to his original journey as possible but in the 64 years since he made his epic journey some roads have disappeared and others have become motorways and too dangerous for the trike absolutely stunning scenery um, beautiful beautiful places uh, going up through um, Interlaken was particularly uh, memorable uh, but also the Alps you know seeing the Eiger um, close up and, uh, and and just retracing Denny's uh, footsteps from all of those years ago and, and we went through all kinds of weather uh, I mean we had beautiful sunshine at the start and then um, as the uh, as the gradient increased and, the, and we got higher and higher into the mountains, the weather deteriorated, got colder, until um, going up through some of the Suston Pass, for instance, uh, I mean, it was snowing very, very heavily and it was very cold. And uh, and Dan, who was our main uh, driver, was, was having to uh, deal with the elements as well as trying to control the trike. Um, and uh, that was no mean feat up, up there, I can tell you. I must say that we had a fantastic support crew um, and we had Sergeant Bell from the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers who carried out so many uh, repairs for us that you know I kind of lost count in the end and he'd done a superb job at keeping the trike on the road. Um, we had various punctures, we had wheels that buckled, we had the um, idler which had to be disconnected, we had uh, about three snap chains, um, we had issues with the choke, we um, we had issues with the gears and of course the clutch which nearly burnt out um, right at the end. It attracted enormous amount of attention from bikers. Um, we get a lot of bikers out on the Swiss Alps um, and uh, they all ended up just turning their, their heads every time the, the trike went past and an enormous amount of uh, attention from bikers uh, and from the locals as well. The local population were, were fascinated by the trike. Along the way the team picked up a guest driver Nick Hamilton, who is a disabled racing driver currently competing in the Clio Cup. He's clearly picked up some of his driving skills from his older brother Lewis. A real adventure for him, I think, and, and of course to Baroness Tanny, who, who finished it off for us. I mean, the whole team did a superb job. Things are, you know, a lot easier for disabled people. There's the motability scheme, there's the blue badge parking scheme, there's disability living allowance, there's all these opportunities that you know perhaps back then people didn't have it's not you know it's expected you know as a disabled person that you know you can go to work you can have a family you can have a social life all these things that you know some of us just take for granted really I, I know I do so you know it, it is 
it's amazing how things have changed but there is still so much that that has to be done there is still you know terrible discrimination against you know disabled people but you know we have come an incredibly long way